when I was a college professor. My favorite course was teaching beginning guitar, and uh, every year, every every semester, there would be uh, a couple students from the general college who would be in the class. Uh, there would be a couple openings, or 15 guitars, so we'd have 15 students and be a couple openings, mostly music education, music therapy majors. And um, but there were two uh, lucky winners of the lottery, and there they were. And I'd always uh, I'd always tell everyone we're going to be we're going to be accompanying ourselves uh, with our guitars as we sing. And at this juncture, uh, uh, the two hands from the general college would go up, and their faces would be sad. And I, I knew what to expect. And I and I said, "Yes, what's what's the problem?" They said, "Well, Mr. Stewart." Uh, uh, we're going to have to drop the course. And I, I said, well, why? And I knew what they were going to say. And they said, well, I can't sing. And I would say, well, who, well, who told you that? And they would there was never a moment's hesitation. They would say, uh, uh, my Aunt Susie when I was six, or my uh, second grade teacher, Mrs. Johnston. It was always some, somewhere around six or seven that they had been cast out of Eden. And they were told, you don't belong here. You don't belong. So when they saw this opportunity to take the guitar in, in, for a college course, they thought, oh, there's a way back in. There's a way back into the, into the garden. There, there is, and then here they're finding out, no, no, the gates are closed to me. And I would, I would, I would look at them, at these faces that were so sure of where they, you know, they were going to walk out yet again. And I said, well, I'm, I'm happy to report that the original diagnosis was incorrect. And none of these students were able to prove their unworthiness to me. They, I think the, the most stubborn lasted two weeks before he found out that he had a voice. I've got a Johnny Appleseed thing. I believe that the word musician is too often used to discourage people from participating in their birthright as sound makers. We are all sound makers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm just going to remind you all of your birthrights and show you some instruments that I've created along the way uh, uh, to help um, stubborn cases, shall we say, um, uh, uh, recognize uh, their birthrights. I always love making sounds. There was a rule in my household. No musical instruments at the dinner table. The rule had to be, in ref had to be enforced regularly. We had sound makers all over the place. So I grew up making lots of sound, and I never got over it. Um, and uh, when, I got to be, uh, when I got to be older, and, and, I, and I had studied years, I'd studied the cello, and I'd studied the guitar, and I'd studied the piano, and, and I'd done a lot of singing. But I always wanted to make, I wanted to make a sound on a wind instrument. And so um, uh, on, a, on a tour, I, I, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, be playing in Twelfth Night, a wonderful production up at Lincoln Center the summer of 98, and Paul Simon was in the audience opening night, and he, he had a million questions, and the last one was, can I get your phone number? I gave it to him, he called, and I've been playing with him ever since, and that's been a joy. The first tour, on a pop tour, you have two options. You have, you have some free time, so you can either work on a new drug habit, or you can have a project. <laughs> My project involved vibrating columns of air. I soon discovered that every tube was a didgeridoo. And when I was emerging from the seventh or eighth dumpster on our seventh or eighth date, my to-be bride said, Mark, you're, you've got a job. What, what are you doing? What are you jumping in dumpsters? I said, well, I, for me, it's patriotic behavior. I'm recycling. I'm finding things. I'm, and she said, well, there's something more to it. And then a couple of weeks later, I walked out, and there was a butter knife in the, in the gutter. And right away, you know how your brain just leaps? You don't have any control. It leaps. I designed. This, a thumb piano made from found objects. In that instant, I've seen a butter knife every day of my life. It wasn't until it was garbage that my brain, I went home that night and I said, sweetie, I can tell you, I like the way my brain works when I'm looking at garbage. <laughs>
It's the hermaphrodite of musical instruments. <laughs> the shalladu. I only have five minutes and seven seconds. The chalemont was the French Baroque clarinet. No keys, just holes. This is the challadu. Why? Because it's a chalemont and it's a didgeridoo. So it's the challadu. I carried this around. I had this whole idea about companion instruments. I carried this everywhere in New York. There are lots of private moments in public space. I found them all. <laughs> this is American electricity. 60 cycles, slightly sharp B flat. This is European. 50 cycles, a G. I'm equipped to deal with any kind of buzz anywhere in the world with this horn. Yeah, so I shall I do it. So many people asked about it, I started carrying recipe cards. I brought some tonight, but maybe, maybe another time. But if you really want one, the front has a little schematic and the back has all the instructions how to make it. Anyone can play this. You come out of the womb going all set to use your mouth in the way. I'm a guitar player. Lots of fun. So. The slide whistle organ. Why? Why does it sound so good? I said to myself, why? Why is this so lovely? It's because you've never heard three flutes play in perfect rhythmic unison before. It's a simple little thing, but there it is, and it's delightful. These instruments don't inherit a system of order. People who play these tend to get right to the finger painting of sound. People get right to it. I had the, I had the bug. I designed this. I didn't have a laptop. Can we see if we got something? That's a bobby pin. Here's the long side. Here's the wee side. Nail file. Ooh. This instrument is different every day. Oh, by the way, the, the, all the little pieces of tape, they're holes. Every, every piece of tape on the shalladu is a hole. Open up another set of holes on another day. Have another horn. Do something else. Where are the holes? Where your fingers are. Can it play a C major scale, said my esteemed colleague. You know, I think the C major scale has enough friends already. <laughs> okay, we, I think we got to get right to the, 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 the jam session here. So, okay, you have, uh, you have drink stirs, right? Take your drink stir. Everyone got it? You, you got these little things? Okay. V, you're about to experience real hi-fi for the first time. Some of you have done it before. Okay, it's called bone conduction. Now these drink stirs, I got them this morning. There's one side that's kind of flat and one that's kind of tall. Take the flat side and you're gonna bite it like this. Stick, make one side a little longer than the other. Bite it, yeah? Nice bite, yeah. Okay, now you're gonna take your thumbs. Don't do it, I'm gonna tell you. You're gonna take your thumbs, you're gonna plug your ears, not yet, because you wanna hear me. Plug your ears and then you're gonna use your pinkies to play the thing, okay? <laughs> Try it. Okay, you're the only one that can hear you. Now tune it, tune it. Get a boom, 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 Yeah. All right, so how many people are here? Does someone know how many people? How many? 350, we're gonna play 350 duets right now, and every one of you is going to hear the duet. Only you. You're all going to hear me, but only you are going to hear you. This is private music. There's public music, there's private music. Private music together. Okay, we have 39 seconds. Here we go.
bravi, tutti bravi. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight.